So you currently join me in the middle of a project, which itself is a part of a much larger project. Think Inception, but instead of dreams, it's machining. Now I've mostly finished machining and aluminium housing, and one feature that I'd really like to add is a countersink on the back side of those holes, on the inside of the part effectively, or you can probably call it internal countersinking. And I'm sure most of you know the normal process for countersinking a hole, and it should be pretty obvious that using a normal countersinking tool, it's probably going to be impossible to use that here. And in many ways, it sort of feels like that this sort of feature shouldn't be possible, at least if you use a manual machine like I do. So let's go ahead and figure it out, see if we can make this work. Now, a quick search of Google brings up these Noga tools with a rotating cutting head, which allows you to get a big cutting head through a smaller hole. And whilst it looks like a pretty cool tool, I have two problems. One, I no got the money for that, and two, it's really more of an internal deburring tool than a countersinking tool. Another search brought up a forum link to someone using a center tool in a custom holder, and whilst that looks like a really cool solution, and I'm sure it would work in a lot of situations, I'm not exactly sure that it would work here, because you need a fair amount of space on the inside to insert the tool. On the part that I'm working on, the wall is incredibly thick, and I only have about 12mm of space to work in. Now the next idea was to use a hollow countersinking tool, but instead of using it with a drill, I'd instead use it with an arbor and pull up from the inside of the workpiece. And that was the plan and probably what I would recommend and it would have saved me a lot of time here, but unfortunately I have about 12mm of space to work with and the one that I was able to measure in the size that I needed came out to being just over 15mm long. And with the grub screw where it was, I wouldn't be able to take it down far enough. So step one, I need to make a custom cutter. So I'm starting off with a piece of 1045 stock. It can be hardened to about 60 Rockwell, but it's not a tool steel by any means. But since we're going up against aluminium, you can probably use anything as a cutting tool and it would probably work. So we'll start off by cleaning up the end and then getting a four and a half mil hole drilled all the way through it. The hole's going to be for an arbor, and the arbor needs to be smaller than the minor diameter of the thread hole. In this case, it's 5mm, so 4.5 gives us a bit of breathing space. I'll then come in with a tool and then taper the end to about 45 degrees. And once that's done, I'll take it to the mill and mill a step in that chamfered area, just to below the center line. Doing this will form the cutting edge. Now initially, I was going to go for a more advanced geometry than this, and if you were going to do this in steel, it probably would need to be done. But with aluminium and other soft metals, it should be okay. And with that now done, I'll then get a hole drilled and tapped for an M4 grub screw. This will hold the cutting head to the arbor. I'll then get it back in the lathe, deburr it, and then get it parted. And I know as far as cutting tools go, it does look incredibly basic, but it should work. And once I already have the stock in the lathe, I'll get started on machining the arbor. And there's really nothing too complicated here. It's just a 25mm long shaft, taken down until we get a good fit between it and the cutting head. With the fit now established, I'll then get it parted. And there you have it. Honestly, it took way longer to come up with the idea itself than it took for me to make it. Now at this point, I still haven't heat treated it, and if I was going to use this tool a lot, you would want to do that. But honestly, for two counter sinks in aluminium, I should be able to get away with it in its annealed state. There's also no relief or clearance in the tool, which probably will need to be addressed. But before I do that, let's just see if it works. Now the way that this is intended to work is that you have the spindle aligned with the hole that you are intending to counter sink. You then put the arbor in the jewel chuck and then drop it through the workpiece. 
And at the same time, you will want to try and drop the arbor through the cutting head. And once you do that, you want to lock the spindle and then tighten the grub screw. Now with this design, you can face the tool up or down, but I'm assuming that the most common way to set it up would be with the cutting tool facing upwards. And outside of that, the process for countersinking is pretty much as normal as it normally would be, with the obvious exception that you're countersinking in the other direction. And so far, it seems to be cutting quite well. It's definitely producing a nice chip and a nicely formed countersink. So there we are, not so impossible after all. With that said though, it's not perfect. The lack of clearance obviously seems to be compromising the cutting action and it's forming a rather large burr on the outside of the countersink. Not impossible to clean up, but I think we can do a little bit better. So what I'll do now is I'll come in with some files and I'll try and add some clearance by hand. There are definitely more precise ways of doing this, but because this is a one-off tool, doing it this way hopefully should work. And honestly, I didn't add a whole lot of clearance, but by the time I did the second one, the burr had almost completely disappeared. Not entirely, but I'm sure with a bit more revision to the design, we could get it to work flawlessly. But outside of that, I'm really impressed with the results. Outside of the burr, the countersink itself is really nicely formed. Now of course, with all that said, if I had a bit more space to work with, and I had been able to use the off-the-shelf countersink, I'm sure it would have worked flawlessly and given us no burr. And whilst I haven't tried them out yet, they are probably what I recommend for aluminium and soft steel. It is worth pointing out that these are wood tools, and whilst they are hardened, they're probably not made from high-speed steel. So if you do need to do this in a tougher steel, it's probably back to square one here, making a custom cutter for the job. But with all that said, I'm sure some variation of what I'm doing here will do the job. At least that's my take on the problem and how I worked it out. I'm sure there are a lot of different ways for tackling this same issue. Now as far as internal countersinking goes, I am going to leave it here, at least for the moment. Mostly because I do need to get this project finished. But I do hope that this is a useful starting off point if you ever find yourself in a similar position. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.